afterwards we're going to do a review, or I'm going to do a review, it's no we, it's just me, me and the voices in my head, of the new album by Blood Command. And you want to, you want to stick around for that at the end. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Vinyl Fetish. We're up here in the hot vinyl attic. It is a hot August night. We're in another heat dome. The heat wave of 2022 continues. The icebergs are melting. The sea is rising. A third of Pakistan is underwater, and Mississippi has no water to drink. Something's going on. I think we should talk about the planet. Funny that we are uh, talking about the planet. Uh, we're doing. We're continuing our hundred albums that must be in your con collection. <laughs> hundred albums. It's so hot I can't even talk. Hundred albums that must be in your collection. We're at number seventeen on our hundred uh, list. And we're going to do an album today that you probably don't know. We've been picking some albums, you know, Blondie, Harry Styles, that people know these things. This might be an album that you don't know. Uh, I'm really excited to share this with you because I think this is one of the lost gems of the late 70s. We're talking about uh, a band from Birmingham, England called City Boy and their 1979 album, The Day the Earth Caught Fire. Let me tell you how I got this album, first of all. Uh, I, when I lived in Stone Mountain, I was a little vinyl kid. Uh, I loved used record stores because your, your, your $10, you know, your lawnmower money went twice as far as a used record store. And I was at a record store on Memorial Drive called Craig's Collectibles. If there's any old Atlanta people here, they might remember Craig's Collectibles. Uh, and I was going through, when I saw this album, I liked the cover. I liked it, it was a pr promotional copy, which to me was rare. Something that was in the hand of a DJ. Uh, and I picked it up, 94Q, right there, that was the radio station. And this album uh, uh, has consistently been a favorite of mine. And I love to play it in the summer when the earth is heating up, the day the earth caught fire. This record, let me tell you a little bit about this band, City Boy. This is their, I think, their fifth album. Uh, they were... Um, Kind of, uh, you know, a, a band that was trying to make it out of Northern England, and they had a couple minor successes in England, including uh, "Go Yes, Go West, Young Man," which was, I think, the album before this one, and um, then put out this record, and it is a, a six-piece band uh, led by Lowell Mason, who is this multi-talented guy. He just died in two thousand nineteen heart attack, I think, uh, and uh, Steve Botton, who is the sort of two vocalists in this band, Steve, and Steve Botton went on after this band, they had one more record after this one, maybe one or two, and then they kind of faded, Steve Botton went on as a songwriter, wrote She Bop and the Goonie song for, for um, Cindy Lauper, and then became a, a vice president at Jive Records, and is the guy that signed Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and that whole thing, went on to work with Britney Spears. But this record, <laughs> let me let me tell you about this record. I, I don't know if this is a concept album or what, but this is the perfect coming together of everything that was happening in the late 70s, from the prog stuff and the stuff that bands like Guess were trying to do, which later, like in the early 80s with Mr. Roboto, uh, the kind of funky new wave stuff that Blondie was doing, the power pop, and... Um, it all comes together in this bizarre record that is so freaking good and never gets boring. It has elements of reggae, of ballad. Uh, the last song is like a 12 and a half minute song called Am Ambition. The The record starts with um, something that you young people don't know about. In the old days when we didn't know what time it was, we would call phone number up and they would say, at the beep, it will be 310. <laughs> So you could set your watch by the lady on the telephone. Um, that is long gone. But the uh, the album starts with that voice and ends with that voice and is a, a meditation on apocalypse, on the end of the world, the day the earth caught fire. And it is prescient and prophetic. And as we head towards the the just the nightmare of global climate change, this record should be back on everybody's turntables. Um, one of the things that happens in this band is you have these two vocalists, two lead vocalists, um, Wall and Steve, who are just sort of like 
two very different, one guy's very low, and one guy's very high. Uh, and uh, these great musicians, these songs that have multiple parts. You know, I think a band on the run is like three or four different level songs. These songs have multiple parts. There's songs about technology. There's songs about, um, about kind of the end of the world. And um, it's crazy. It was produced by Mutt Lang. So a lot of people know Mutt Lang. Mutt Lang did everybody. He produced everybody. He did ACDC. He did Def Leppard. He did a ton of great records. Then he married Shania Twain. He did some of her records for a while. Done some really famous pop records. I mean, Mutt Lang is one of the great rock producers. I think, in fact, one of the reasons I picked this up is because I had, I had John Robert John Lang as the producer on it. Um, th this record didn't happen at all. They had a video out. The video was sort of super cheesy, as videos pre-MTV tended to be in 1979. They're like all in uh, this industrial wasteland singing The Earth Got Fire in their, their stupid 80s. 70s disco wear, uh, running in slow motion. Uh, I'll put the link to it in the in the description. Um, but there's some something, something happens on this record. There's some. <laughs> I don't. Maybe it's just me. But every single year in the summertime, I drag this record out, and I think this record is telling us about the future. It's so good. It's so complex. There are these jagged rhythms that come in. Um, the Mutt Lang production, production is just top of the line. And then this band produ produced uh, or put out another record, but, um, uh, Lawton left, and then they I think they maybe put out one more record, and then they called it quits because nobody was interested. I don't know why. I don't know why. This is, of the releases, of all the great releases of 1979, this one was one of the best, City Boy. And one of the things you don't always like to bring something in is, can you make a definitive statement of your time? Can you say something that is so spot on what's happening in the world and what's going to happen in the world and it not catch on? Even if it's got good music, it's got a good beat, beat and you can dance to it. It's got all the requirements that, the, that my, by, by, you know, the template, this should have been a huge album, but wasn't. And so many people don't even know this band anymore. City Boy, who is that? Um, can you make a really clear artistic musical statement? And it go nowhere. That is so good. I think this is something that happens a lot in the hip hop world. I think there are these hip hop records, whether it's a song or a full album that come out, that are so perfectly articulate of the time that we're in, and they just they just don't go anywhere because there's so much other noise going on, so much pop stuff, and so much rock that you're supposed to listen to. If you love the intersection of prog, new wave, and power pop. Um, you can listen to this whole album on Spotify. I'll include the link. Uh, if you can find a vinyl copy, it is really sweet. This is, you know, they're, they got they got kicked off Atlantic and went on to Mer uh, Mercury. So this was their last Atlantic record. And then um, they have a couple records on Mercury, I think. But this is uh, really good. There's a song on here called Up in the 80s where it's too hard to breathe. And I'm like, God, 80s sounds cool right now. It's going to be up in the hundreds this week. Let's go down to the 80s. So if you need a soundtrack for global climate change that is both completely au courant and classic rock, City Boy is your, is your jam. All right. Now that we've talked about City Boy, I want to bring it up to the present uh, and talk about the new album by Blood Command out of Norway. This record, woo! Let me tell you about how I found out about this record. I've been doing a little um, thing each month where I keep track of all the releases that come out each month, uh, and I try to listen to at least one song from every single album that's released each month. You can do that thanks to Spotify. And uh, last month, um, one of the releases was Blood Command. I'm like, I like the title. Uh, the name of the album is Praise Armageddon. This is going to be good. It looks like a Jack Kirby Marvel cover. I'm like, this looks like something I want to listen to. And I pulled out... Uh, the uh, a song on here called a villain's a villain's monologue. And I was like, holy crap! This this is what I need to hear right now. In fact, the video for it is so wide open that I immediately hopped in my car, drove to Music Millennium, and bought the vinyl. It is um, it's kind of an intersection, you know, in this postmodern world we're living in. It's a little bit screamcore, 
Uh, they're calling it death pop. There's a lot of, you know, there's a female vocalist who is just very good at screaming her lungs out. But it's got some pop elements into it. There's a little bit of Paramore in there, I would think. Uh, although they might not want to hear it. And it has some dance elements to it. I mean, it's kind of like punk plus. Plus metal, plus dance, plus rave music. And um, one of the reasons I really started paying attention to this record is that I'm in this uh, 70s classic rock discussion group on Facebook. And it's a lot. I thought it would be really fun, like, talking about, let's talk about some obscure 70s rock bands like Budgie or City Boy. Uh, it's a lot of old white people who want to complain about the kids today and the music they listen to. And the music they listen to is noise. And the music we listen to is real music. And I'm like, I remember the first time my dad heard me listening to ACDC. And he's like, what's that noise? That's not music. <laughs> it's like these rock fans who are now my age and older are sound just like what old people say when they listen to rock and roll. And so I was like, you know, screw that. I'm not going to just be in this nostalgia loop listening to Fog Hat for the rest of my life. I want to listen to the stuff that the, the that's being put out now. And I put... Um, I put the link to the video for a villain's monologue on this um, 70s classic rock group. And the first thing they did is they said it's noise, that's not music. That's what people said about Led Zeppelin and the Beatles and everybody else. And then I got banned. Then I got kicked off the page because I was like, you old people, listen, it's so good. It rocks. They're out on tour in Europe right now. It is a, a wonderful package. Um, I'll show you a picture of the band. This is the band. That's the singer right there. She's a recent... This is her first album since 2017. So I don't know if she's been in the band that long. But she's a dynamo powerhouse. And the band is really, really tight. Um, comes with lyrics and everything you know about the band. And of course, as we've been showing, uh, all new records must come out in colored vinyl. Look at this. <laughs> that looks so good spinning on your turntable. And it will drive your neighbors crazy. So if you're someone who thinks you're not dead yet, and I hope I die before I go old, and I don't want to be one of those people that thinks that the music that kids today, that they listen to is all noise, get Blood Command, put it on, side one, lots of sonic variation in the record, but screaming throughout, and I guarantee you the old fuddy-duddies who are all like, listen, that Led Zeppelin, are going to tell you that that's not music that that's noise but it is music and it is good music blood command my new favorite band hot on vinyl um really worth worth the spin all right that's it that's the review for this week uh we're gonna be back soon we might do another video with cozy but we are going to um do another kind of as summer drags on we're gonna do another great summer album for 100 albums that must be in your collection. We're going to do XTC's 1987 album Skylarking, which I know some of you have. Freaking one of the best records of the 80s, one of the best records of all time. We'll talk about that next time. All this music matters. You matter. Let's talk about it. And be sure to hydrate. Rock on.